bouncing and there we go. We are live. And uh, awesome. welcome everybody live on Facebook. Uh, this is uh, Joe Milton with the ISPWP, the International Society of Professional Wedding Photographers. And today in our ongoing series of interviews, we have with us Stephen Herrschaft from Germany. Pretty good. Pretty yeah. good. I got it. <laughs> I've been practicing. <laughs> so uh, welcome, Stephen. Good to have you here. Thanks for coming. Hey. It's, it's good to be here, really. Thanks for the invitation, to be honest. My pleasure. Glad the time difference worked out okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's fine. It's, it's yeah. 8 p.m. right now, yeah. so it's, it's all good. It's all good. So um, we're going to start off by talking a little bit about Steven, some of his background, how we got started and such. But uh, just let everybody know um, he is a, an ISPWP member and right. multi, multi-award winning uh, member in our contest. So we're really excited to have him here and to figure out what makes him tick and what, what makes him be the photographer that he is. So, <laughs> uh, so why don't you go ahead and start and just, I, I know you started at a, at a young age. How did, how did you get started in wedding photography? This is uh, gonna be fascinating. All right, uh, first of all, I'm 21 years old right now. It's my sixth season in wedding photography this year. Um, but things started pretty early for me. Um, I, yeah, I've been I've been in wedding photography for a pretty long time. Um, good experience, bad experience, experiences. I did pretty much everything. But it all started a lot earlier. I'm, I was pretty happy, or I was pretty lucky. Uh, some, yeah, a li- little uh, earlier to that, because when I was like 14, 15 years old, I was in school. Of course, usually people at that right. age are in school. And I was, um, let's say I was a student who uh, was orientated to doing, to get the best out of less you, you're doing. And we're having these kind of project weeks in Germany mm-hmm. for young kids where they can basically try out different things and just work on different stuff that you're interested in. And... Like, I don't like that stuff. I, do, I didn't like it at all, to be honest. I'm, I was more like, oh, let's look who's the teacher that I like the most, and I don't have to do anything at all. Mm-hmm. Turns out that teacher did a photography class for one week. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> and, and how, so I and came how old were you at that point? Uh, 40 or 50 or something, like 15 okay, or something 15. like that. Okay. I, was, I, was, I was pretty young. And I never had a camera in my hand. I didn't like photography at all. It just, yeah. And I don't know what happened in these five days, but afterwards, like, my camera kept the power of my life. Like, I didn't shoot on a regular basis, but I was still super interested in photography and got interested in photography. And I'm still super uh, thankful to that teacher who, Mm -hmm. like, really made me interested to that. And a little side note, now he's giving, like, classes on a regular basis for photography because um, I kind of inspired him in my story and what I did afterwards. Yeah. So he had uh, the feeling that he's doing something correct. And yeah, he really did. Does, does, that, uh, people... does that teacher bring you into his classroom and have you make presentations to his students? He should bring you in as a guest speaker. He didn't. He didn't. He always, he always said he wanted to, but it's just, it's, it's not a time. Yeah, it's yeah. just, yeah. I'm pretty busy. He's pretty busy as, as well as a teacher. Yeah. So we're, so you, we're so all at 14 or 15, never having used a camera before. You were really starting from scratch, like aperture, shutter yeah. speed. I mean, the basics, yeah. right? Yeah. Automatic. Automatic, right. <laughs> Automatic mode all professional the professional mode, right? <laughs> right. And, and, right. And what kind of photos uh, were you guys taking at, at, as part of that? Was it uh, everything? Just every, basically everything. Just walking around school and, yeah, doing... Shooting what what you what feels right to you, which mm-hmm. is, to be honest, not not the worst. Um, if you're starting out in, in, in this hobby, or uh, if you consider something like that, just do what feels right to you. Yeah. I mean, yeah. still, that's something that is really in, still really is in my mind to do the things that I want to do. Um, but at that place, it, it is even much more important, to be honest. So, <laughs> this is kind of like the first stage of my story the second stage is that i'm um i was a swimmer for 10 years of my of my life from 8 to 18 or something like that i did it on a high performance basis i did like uh 20 hours uh, of practicing every week 
sometimes before school, after school, and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And I was I was pretty good. I was I was state champion and like one of the top twenty thirty in Germany at that time. And You're pretty serious. I always that's a that's a big part of your life then. It, it was it was yeah. like it, it always was my passion and I went kind of crazy about that and it was yeah well it wasn't too good for my health but still skip that to that point. Swimming, um, swimming always, wasn't good for your health <laughs> or the obsession. Um, I mean, if you're um, doing 20 hours every week for, I mean, that, that that's lot. the time I had for like five years or something like that. Yeah. Doing competitions every week uh, or every weekend around Europe, Germany and all that places. Mm-hmm. Like swimming itself is a pretty healthy sport, period. But... It's like in every sport. If you're doing too much, it turns the other way around. Yeah. And well, that's kind of mild. Because you have other parts of your life suffer if you, if you have too much time yes. invested. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I get it. Also, I, I still feel it in my knees, to be honest. Mm-hmm. And I had back problems for like three years after I skipped swimming. Mm-hmm. So um, now they were all fine. I'm feeling pretty good right now. Um, still trying to be healthy. And still like doing so much sports, which is which is doing really good, and which is the best decision for weddings itself. Mm-hmm. To be super, um, to be super sporty and having like the the endurance to shoot the wedding from like early in the morning to like in the uh, early oh, yeah. night stage. Oh yeah, well, sometimes I definitely want to talk to you like, about that. That's a that's a big part. Sorry, of, I'm, that's, I'm no, that's okay. That, no, no, it's okay. That's a big part of of uh, of you. So let's get to that in in a second. Let's let's go back and just finish um, from taking the class or learning photography, right. and then how do you go from there to saying, I guess number one, oh, well, I, number one, I want to be a wedding <laughs> photographer, and then number two, how do I get that experience of people to hire me when I'm so young? Yes. Um. Well. I, as I said, I always train with um, people who are older than me, some like in the twenties, sometimes thirties. And like one day, another swimmer from another part of Germany came to uh, to my team. He he, he like um, joined um, all the things, and he was a wedding photographer. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, to be honest, like um, when you're a swimmer, you're always pretty close to your teammates, and you're mm-hmm. talking about them like uh, with them all the time. So um, yeah, when when you're in the, in the locker room, like, and there was always this chat, like he's saying he's a wedding photographer, and I said, oh hey, um, I'm doing kind of photography as well as a hobby. And the first thing he was saying was like, oh, you have to go with me to a wedding. And that's the part when. Uh, Three big crosses in my head said, "No way, <laughs> never. You're going to a wedding with him. Yeah. I like I, I like him as a person, but not at all." Mm-hmm. <laughs> but the thing is, he keep asking me to come with him. And one day, I just said, "Okay, let's do it." And uh, I pretty much can remember this day like it was it was one of my last. But after that wedding. I said, this is what I want to do. Mm-hmm. This is what I want to do, living as long as I possibly can. Yeah. yeah. And, so and, that is and kind was, of, that, was that other photographer, did he, have, uh, did he have a lot of experience? Did he, have, did he actively sort of teach you and coach you, or did he just have you come along as a second photographer? Well, <laughs> he was a pretty okay photographer. Mm-hmm. Like he, it, it, it's a hard answer. Like, <laughs> no, no, I get it. But he, he, he got your he's politically correct, to be honest. No, no, yeah. he's, because he's at not 16, you probably, had, you probably hadn't been to a whole lot of weddings, right? Never. Never before. Yeah. And still, to, to, to now, today, I still haven't been privately to a wedding. Never. Mm-hmm. It's always a job. <laughs> it's, just, it's just a job. Yeah. It's, yeah, that's another topic. Yeah. It's just a job. Yeah. And it's, it's an awesome job, but well, it's just you're 21, you know, give it a few years and all your friends will start getting married. And they'll be invited to a whole, there'll be like a couple of years see. where there'll be lots and lots of weddings to go to. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't hope so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so that's how you got your start. So, um, 
Right. So you're more or less a second shooter or like an assistant photographer for the, his weddings. Right? I, w I was a second shooter. I never, I never did uh, assisted in other people. And okay. um, he was, that comes kind of from, he's not like having too much of like the, like the style you would need an assistant. Like if you're flashing like around all the time, you probably will need an assistant. Right. And he right. didn't. Okay. So he gave, gave me the freedom and which was pretty cool to just do what I wanted to do. Okay. Thing is, I did one season with him, which was like 15 weddings, which is pretty a lot, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And after that, I said, it's cool being with him, but I want to do something different. Because when I was looking at my images, they were all looking like him. Mm -hmm. Or like his style. Sure. And that's how most people start. You yeah, your copy someone, right? Yeah, that's how you right, that's how you right. like get started. And it's yeah. not a bad thing. It's no, not a bad, bad thing. thing. You're watching his work, you're seeing them as kind of an idol or something you're looking up to. Mm -hmm. Which is okay. But I feel like one of the best decisions decisions in my career was to just get out of it and just ask myself what I want to do, what what is basically my Steven style that I have now, mm -hmm. which is, I wouldn't say it's 100% unique because it's super hard in, in this um, business or uh, in, in wedding photography itself to be like 100% unique. I guess we're all having some parts of other photographers out there. Sure. I have to do, and I'm not definitely not free of that. But just asking yourself what is important to you what is like the things that you're really into mm -hmm. and what you don't want to do in photography or in, at least in wedding photography. Right. right. Well, that's the I thing like that's... about wedding photographers is that there's two sides to it. On the one side, you want to please your client and give them the photos that they want. Of course. On the other side is there's this, an, an amazing creative uh, satisfaction that you get okay. yourself to be able to keep improving your art and your, and your technique and, and your, your own vision and your own work. Yeah. So it's both sides. It's... So, 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 so how did you I mean, break, how did you break out then from going from sort of learning and copying his style to maybe looking at other photographers or, or how did you start learning other styles or, um, or maybe find other photographers to emulate or, or copy or not copy, but learn from, <laughs> you know, I mean, all those competitions were definitely a huge inspiration from the very start. Yeah. I'm looking at ISPWP, Fearless and all those competitions out there for such a long stage in my life and to not say those those competitions did not influence me would be definitely a lie mm -hmm. they did sure. and it's because well they're inspiring like, yeah definitely when i first came up to um to i don't know if it was fields or ispwp and i saw all these amazing work which was like completely a new world that that suddenly opened there were all these super talented people mm -hmm. and it showed me there's so much more than just like kind of cool stuff. Yeah. yeah. That it, he wasn't he wasn't ba a bad photographer, and the, it, it wouldn't be unfair to him to say that he was yeah. good. Yeah. But those people are amazing, and they are still amazing. And photography or wedding photography um, competitions are still uh, being an influence for me. Sure. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah, and, and I think. They do two things. They do a couple of things. One is they inspire and they give you idea, ideas to try or new techniques to try um, or new ways of thinking. Um, uh, but they also, for me, it's always a revelation for me to see the differences photography from country to country. You'll see different styles and approaches in China versus Eastern Europe versus, you know, Brazil. Uh, and that's that's what I find so fascinating that there are still some regional trends, but even those trends definitely. change over time. It's it's fascinating to me. It's just fascinating. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. I mean, we're we're kind of behind in Germany, and mm -hmm. um, no, it's so. it's a it's a pity. It's it's a pity, and yeah. at least some some of us are now getting together yeah. and just like uh, working together um, in, in terms of getting like learning from each other, getting better together. Yeah. Um, for example, in May, uh, 30 of us, um, are going to, uh, Mallorca, uh, in, in mm -hmm. Spain, mm -hmm. Spain Island. Beautiful. And just, just being there together and just like talking to each other 
for like three or four days in, in May, which is pretty awesome. We did the same in, um, near the Baltic Sea mm -hmm. uh, last year. And it's just awesome to connect with all these great photographers yeah. out there yeah. and just like talk to them and getting better together. And it doesn't mean we're all doing the same things. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, we're having some pretty unique people like uh, Katja and Heiko Schmidt. You maybe mm -hmm. know them. Yeah. They're pretty good photographers. They're organizing all that stuff, which I'm super thankful for. Um, and some like super cool individuals. And so we're trying to, to work together, but it, yeah. it gets slowly and, but it, it's, it's going. I mean, yeah. we're all looked to like the Netherlands or Belgium and all those. Yeah. Those, bloody amazing those get together are, are so great because many people don't always realize that many photographers, it's a, it can be a, it can be a lonely profession because oftentimes you're working yes. alone, you're in front yes. of your computer. You know, you're talking to your clients, and, and uh, it's not like you go to a workplace with 100 other people all the time. So the get-together is where so you can true. share ideas and just get energized is always very, very important. So I want to I want to go back and, and ask you one question again about your start. So I want to hear the story about, like, the first time you signed your first client who paid you to shoot their wedding. <laughs> oh, well, at my first wedding, I didn't sign a contract at all, so. <laughs> That's okay. Give me some money. <laughs> <laughs> we just don't do that. Right. Don't, don't do, do that, that. people out there. No, just get a contract. Never, never. It, it's, it can turn out really bad. It didn't. There were uh -huh. some pretty nice people, honestly. Um, well, it, it wasn't like a super paid job. Mm -hmm. We all, I, all I, at least I started out at some super low cost um, because sure. I, when I, when I started out for myself, I looked up forums for private couples on the internet. Mm -hmm. And I basically looked up all those couples and I asked them, hey, do you want me to shoot your wedding? I charge this and that for this and that hour. And hey, are you interested? Which is, it got me like 12 bookings or something mm -hmm. in the first season. Mm -hmm. But of course, all like super low budget, which is okay, to be mm -hmm. honest. And I feel like if, this is the only way that makes you kind of or helps you to fulfill your dreams. It can work out. You just have to find the, the right uh, point to get up your prices. Mm -hmm. I mean, now I'm charging like 20 times what I did at, at that point, sure. which is sure. pretty crazy and still crazy for me. And it's, it's cool how, how far I came in that time. Yeah. Well, it just shows you how, how you have to go after it, how you have to have that humble beginning, build a portfolio, build the experience, and you get to yes. the point where you know yourself that you're yes. putting out great work and you're worth more. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's a lot about um, like knowing what you are and getting confidence with what you're doing. Mm -hmm. That's something that I need time for. But it helped me growing in what I wanted to do. It's, it's all kind of like the, the branding, um, knowing who you are mm -hmm. part. Yeah, and, and just a lot of work. It's just a, a yes. heavy workload. You have to be able yes. to work harder than the next person and put in the fail hours, a lot. fail a lot, right? Fail you have to dedicate yourself to it, yeah. Um, learn what you don't want to do. It's much, it's much, sometimes it's much more important than what you want to do. Yeah. Well, um, it's it's like a competitive swimming, right? You put in, yeah. you got to put in the time, you got to put in the work, uh, even the parts of it that you don't like doing, you still have to do those parts. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, still, still, we, it, wedding photography is not the perfect unicorn world that we're, or at least some people are trying to uh, to put out on Facebook and all that stuff. We are all having our failures, not failures, and all our struggles with ourselves. Yeah. But it makes us all of that makes us a better photographer, which is good, which is which is really good. Yeah, and and like you said, we were saying before the uh, the physical demands. The yes, uh, uh, I always remember because I live in in the West Coast in the Pacific Northwest, so we have seasons. So it's more of a seasonal market. So in the winter, it same goes yeah. down. Yeah, right. Same in Germany. So I always remember those first couple of weddings, my legs were killing me because <laughs> so like, you're up and down, up and down. And uh, yeah, you always had to go through like a uh, get it back in shape routine before the season started up again. So, I mean, I feel like the best part is just don't stop. Like, it's just never stop like working out. 
I work out every day for at least one hour. Mm -hmm. I do sometimes swimming, not too often anymore right now because it's pretty hard to find a decent swimming pool in, in my region. But um, yeah, so like running, doing athletics and all those things that are coming together to make me super healthy and not only that i'm also trying to eat like super healthy food mm -hmm. i realized that it's pretty hard in uh in america at least in vegas to to eat oh. healthy yeah, in vegas it's impossible <laughs> it's impossible well oh, that that was an experience for me yeah, yeah. And you were there for a long time you were there for 10 10 days you said uh, 10 days 10 days yeah 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 wppi and i watched the nascar race afterwards okay. and, how, so and how many pounds did you gain how, how much weight did you gain Nothing, no. I I'd always like try to to find like every healthy food that right, I can, right. like, like walking in the supermarket and looking out for where's the salad, yeah. where's the vegetables, where's all those things. To, yeah, but when you travel make... a lot, it's uh, it it messes up your schedule, your regular routine of exercise, yes. diet, yes. work. It's completely different, and all you have is restaurants and sugar everywhere. It's I, I'm pretty, I'm pretty proud of myself that uh, there wasn't at, the one, at one single fast food restaurant in, in whole Vegas, which is, okay. I'm proud now. Very good, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, it's yeah, not only about not eating fast food, but it's also about like I'm, I'm trying to avoid sugar. I don't drink mm -hmm. and I don't smoke. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to do everything possible to make me like fit and just getting physically healthy mm -hmm. for sometimes 20 hour weddings. Yeah. Staying yeah. sharp. I have to, right. yeah, definitely. Yeah. Stay sharp, stay on point for the, for the, cause it's yeah. a, it, those long weddings can be really a grind. They can be um, very demanding and, and you're just dead by the end of those long weddings. Yeah. I mean, there can be the most, like most awesome experience in your lives, like being around people who are like super energetic and oh, yeah. like, getting totally crazy and having basically the time of their lives, which is another thing that I'm super lucky um, about being a wedding photographer is just can, that I just can capture that for those people. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, when you have those long weddings, if it's a great wedding, it's a great people and there's lots going on, you really are, you're in the zone. You don't maybe even realize yeah. how tired you are until after it's yeah. done because you're just constantly pushing to get that next image, that next picture, the next challenge, that next, you know, whatever it is. And that's where your mind is, right? Right, right. But uh, like, at least like at after like 20 hours, you realize that you're retired. Or I at least also try to, to get me, um, which is kind of my pro tip that I never heard from out of photographer. It's just get out of the party for like just five minutes. Mm -hmm. And Look how happy all those people are. Look at all those crazy faces, those laughing people, those super energetic people having such a great time and realizing why you were all doing this. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's just a gift that I can realize that I'm, I'm doing this and I'm able to do this, to be in such a place with those people. Yeah. And that's so rewarding that I feel like it's, it's so okay to put everything I have into, into what I'm doing right now. Yeah, that's the right attitude for sure. Do you, do you feel like that outlook and that attitude that you have um, about the wedding, does that influence um, the type of photography that you do or the type of approach that you take to the wedding? Um, in other words, do you take it as you, like you're responding or reacting to the energy and you're responding and reacting to the people that are there as opposed to saying like, like having it be scripted or have it be the same every time. Like I'm going to do this and that and that and that and then I'm done. Or is it more, this is an amazing event and how am I going to react to it? I mean, um, definitely not. Um, I can't script. I just couldn't. It's just, it feels so bad in my brain to just tell other people what they should do and um uh who said that um lenny lenny man said that um it's just reality is so crazy and so beautiful in some ways mm -hmm. that you could never like script that or at least to that point how crazy and awesome reality is and that's kind of my approach as well to just yeah, go with the flow, I guess, and just doing what 
one once more just do what feels right to me yeah and that's that's so like kind of important and th that also comes with clients who trust me with what yeah with what i do yeah. they put so much i mean they pay a shit lot of, of money which is awesome but they're also putting so much trust in what mm -hmm. i'm doing mm-hmm and, and, trust and when you feel that they trust you, that makes you work even harder for them because you, you know how much they trust you. So when, so when, so when a potential uh, client comes to you, um, what do you tell them in terms of if they ask you, uh, you know, what your style is or how you approach the wedding? What's their typical question and what's your normal answer? Just do what feels right to you. I'm the least important person at this whole event. Please ignore for me because that you have done that's when you do everything right sometimes i look pretty crazy and pretty weird with what i'm doing i i know that i'm sometimes in some pretty weird angles but trust me i know what i'm doing you do have some interesting angles <laughs> you're not afraid to move i <laughs> i can see that from your yeah. pictures yeah I'm, I'm i'm moving a lot and yeah. yeah i mean a lot of photographers would, would tell me something different that it's pretty bad to like moving all the time, but I am moving all the time and I embrace that and it's okay for me to do it because I feel like I'm getting the wrestles that I want to, uh, uh, to get. From it. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, there, there's another thing. It's, it's no rules in wedding photography. <laughs> just never. Just what about, uh, like for, a, uh, the portrait session part of the day? Um, how do you, how do you work the, you know, the bride picture, the groom picture, bride and groom's picture, uh, family pictures. What's your approach there? I mean, um, it's not that I don't do that, but I'm pretty fortunate to work with clients who really don't care about portraits. Bob. Mm -hmm. Part of it uh, well, is, I mean, how, is how you market yourself and what you show them during the right, during the right. consultations, right? So One more time in the, in the planning direction. Yeah. Right. Um, and like I ask them before before the wedding, like. Do you like portraits? And like seventy percent is saying like no, not at all, no portraits. Please just don't just document my our day in, mm -hmm. in, in your perspective, which is why we book you. And like twenty five percent are saying like just give us five minutes, ten minutes, something like that, and we're completely fine. We don't need a lot of portraits. We just want a few for our grandma. I'm pretty fine with that as well. Right. There's something like this 5% who want to do a little more effort with that. I'm still trying to not pose anyone in, in things like just let's now do this here mm -hmm. and this hand here and all that stuff. I try to, to make it like as natural and right. as um, okay. yeah, comfortable for them as possible. I mean, it's a, it's a, I understand that's a pretty new and pretty um it can be pretty scary because you're in, in the center and you're realizing it for the first time of the day that you are in the center right now at least in my center for for, for photography um so yeah it's just usually pretty chill pretty relaxed and we're basically just having a good time and i'm not trying to pose anything or just not trying to to do more than i need okay to get my results okay so what are your thoughts on, on gear then and how that affects your photography? Do you come up with, uh, you know, 12 cameras and lots of big collection of lenses or are you going, well, <laughs> what's your, what's your approach? I, I'm the worst at, at gear talk and all that stuff. <laughs> and, uh, funny thing. So the other people listening right now, I was at WPPI in, in Vegas like three weeks ago. And I went to that, um, how's the English word for that? Not the conference, but that... Um, the platform speakers or the trade show? No, 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 that, that was bad. Um, <laughs> just, <laughs> no, I mean the um, the other part. The of trade not show, the, the expo. The trade show, right, yeah, the trade, trade show. show. Right. I went to the trade for, show for like 30 minutes, and it just said, let's skip that. Just, there was so much gear and so much people talking about gear, and I said, just... Okay, I'm out. And it was like the the only time I've been there for like 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. So it's just oh, I I hate when when people are talking about gear because I don't care a lot about all that things. Mm -hmm. 
I'm still working with my, my old cans, Mark, Mark, uh, free, uh, 5D or something like that. Mm -hmm. They're my super workhorses and still work. They still work. Luckily, they still work. Maybe they're, they're like, I don't know. They're getting down now because my, my shutter speed is pretty, or at least my, my shutter count is, is pretty crazy. Yeah, like, I, I was at wedding, so I shoot a lot. I shoot a lot. But those cameras, they're giving me trust. And I 100% trust in what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And That's I know really there's important. Yeah. amazing cameras out there, like the Sony A9, like all those. I don't, I don't know. Maybe maybe Nikon has those pretty yeah. nice. Uh, so many mirrorless cameras those, out there now too. Oh, uh, pretty cool things. Mm -hmm. I had kind of a little adventure with Fuji, and I realized that I want to stick with Cam. Okay. Because it just didn't feel right, and I still have that camera. I still use it while traveling, and it's all good for that. But when I'm at weddings, I want to trust in the gear I'm, I'm that I'm using. Um. And it doesn't need to be the most expensive things. My lenses are the basically cheapest things that you can buy. I have like the, the 85, 108, which is like 300 mm -hmm. euros. Great dollars lens. Yeah. That. Yeah. It's a super lens. I have a 28, 1.8, and I'm using the 17 to 40 or something like that, which is like kind of my go-to lens. Mm -hmm. It's pretty crazy because it's an F4 lens. But this lens made me uh, stop down which a lot of photographers are ignoring out there, which mm -hmm. is, in my opinion, one of the number one mistakes that people are doing. Really? Why, why, why so? Slow say say speed. more about that. Why is that? Is why is that the number one mistake people are doing, you think? Because you're able to catch stories and not just flat out images. Because when you're at, gosh, when you're at 1.8, it's just having a face and focus and everything else blur out. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know it's it's debatable and well, it's a style. But it's a, it's, a, it's an approach. Everyone's it's, different. It's, an, it's, it's a style, definitely. Sure. But it's just not what I'm looking into doing. I'm focusing on telling stories. I'm mm -hmm. telling stories to people who are interacting. Yeah. My photography, a lot of times, is about action and reaction, and that's a that's a huge similarity be, between my images. You will, I have some some images prepared, so. At least half of them are pretty much that. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's kind of what I like to add another layer to give depth to an image and depth to a story. Because I think uh, weddings aren't like all the time super pretty. I know we have pretty prides, we have pretty grooms, and that's awesome. But it's not all the time about pretty images yeah it's also yeah well you're and, very story story focus and, and moment focus that's, that's that's your that's your emphasis and that's great that's yeah. you know and i mean we're we're all yeah it's, it's not a thing where we have to to fail or like where you have to discover what you like and what you don't like mm -hmm. i know a lot of people shoot wide open and they just do it all day which is pretty awesome for them but just it just doesn't work because I feel like something's missing with the images. Mm -hmm. There was there was another thing that kind of like made my style different than it was in, in my early stages because I learned like after 2.2.0, .2 you're done. There's 1.4, 1.8, 2.0. That's it. That's all you need. Which is not true. Yeah. I was not. Yeah. Especially and, if you're doing some deep group photos it becomes a problem <laughs> it, it's not yeah that, that's not a part yeah, right. um, but, but it's not also about it's not only about group photos and just yeah. things yeah. It's just it tells more of a story and mm -hmm. that is what, what I like what I like to see in my images because I feel like that's also what my clients want to have because Honestly, they, they could hire someone else if they want just fl flattering images of them in uh, just cornfields yeah. and the sunset. Yeah. And, and there are some clients that love that. Flying on the back. They could have all of that, but then they could just basically just book, book someone else yeah. because I'm not that photographer and I'm pretty sure I'll never be. So that's, yeah. And, and that's why there's different clients and different photographers. So right. They got to find some of that, that uh, matches what you're looking for. Well, speaking right. of images, let's go look at some. We have a, I'm going to bring some up here. Now, I don't think you're going to be able to see it, but I'm going to look at your first picture here. 
I'm going to sh yeah. share it on the screen here. Let me see if I can get this working. There we go. So maybe if you have, if you're watching Facebook at the same time, or if you just bring up the, your first picture of the, uh, the father I hope in the I car with the images as well. <laughs> the father in the car with the reflection of the bride. Right. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's another thing of um, yeah, just action and reaction. That's basically what I do, and um, that's like there are images that you um really need time to develop and you really need um to like shoot a lot sometimes i go crazy and do like eight, 80 100 images from just one scene this was like three or so mm -hmm. <laughs> because i just saw it thought it would be cool shoot it that's yeah. it yeah but it kind of shows what what do you think yeah it's it's having the eye to because a lot of people will just focus on the dad and they wouldn't recognize the reflection. They wouldn't see the reflection right away, right? So, and but it adds like, a layer. It adds a layer. It definitely makes you look twice. That's, I always love images that make you look twice. You go, what am I looking at? Oh, oh, I get it's it. It's also it's also another thing that uh, kind of like describes my style with the humor that I like to bring mm -hmm. in at wedding photography. Yeah. And which I'm also one more time super happy that I have the clients that I have who kind of understand what I'm doing and just mm -hmm. having fun with these kind of images. Just we're saying like, okay, Stephen, just do what I do, and we want to have some funny images if it's possible. And yeah. there was just one of these days where I just had these ideas. And yeah. Well, I think it speaks to the the uniqueness too, because a lot of clients want images that are unique that are just uh, that you're not going to see at every wedding they don't want every yeah. wedding album to look at every all their friends wedding albums so that's, if, that's uh, also yeah, that, yeah that's also one of my kind of for for me mentally to um to do that to just create something for them because mm -hmm. i want to uh, like look at the the they look at the images and say well steven created something that no other couple ever had or might will have. Mm -hmm. Which is pretty crazy and pretty cool. And just, I like being creative with what I'm doing. And it yeah. just helps me to stay fresh in my brain and just keeps me thinking, just constantly trying new angles, just running around like, like crazy and just like, okay. look, where are the angles? What can I do? Are there any mm -hmm. reflections? Are there just things that... I can one thing tell a story and another thing create something unique. And when I saw the images, I felt like, well, now I have something unique for them, which is pretty awesome. And it's not yeah. my stop and just don't like bring my bags to my to my car. But that's the point where I say I'm happy. But now let's move on. Yeah. Yeah. So, again, it's the it's the shooting for your client and also shooting for yourself. You get there's a lot of satisfaction it's super there. Hard. Yeah. I mean, see a lot I of would photographers never... will, will look at the scene and and they maybe they were in close to the car. Maybe they would get a nice reflection of the car of the entire bride, and that would be a nice shot. It'd be a great shot. But to combine cool, yeah. to combine the reflection with the uh, right. the live person is, is takes it to the next level. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but it's just yeah. What what, 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 what I do. I'm going to go to the next one. That, that was the reason I did the WP collection. <laughs> After uh, five times, six times, and something, something like that. that. Finally, it finally got it. something, huh? I, was, I mean, I mean one of all the other competitions out there, so I, I, knew, I knew that that is a pretty cool, cool image. It's also an image that I highly believe in, yeah. which is... Um, yeah, yeah, something, something that, that I, I'm, I'm always, always looking for, like, like images that I, like, I can't understand, believe, and then the day will win an award when I'm, when I'm trying to send them. Yeah. And so, so like this, this is with, the, with the balloon and the dog, right? What do you think? So, so the next image with the, with the boy holding the balloon with the dog yes. in the background? Yes. 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 Yeah, so, so, the, so, you, so you look at this photo and you think, you don't, you don't immediately think wedding, do you? 
there's no typical wedding things here. Oh, that's that's that's, that's, that's a hard, hard to tough topic, topic in Germany, Germany right now. Right now. <laughs> to do, do, we, do, do wedding photography has to look like, like wedding photography. Right, right. No, it doesn't. And it, I, I have some, some pretty harsh to catch the English catalog. This is catch some people out there. Mm-hmm. And I know, I know it's, it's, it's no right, right or wrong, but in the end, end it's, it's the image that I uh, shot at a wedding. wedding. So, so for me, in the first right. place, it's for the clients, time. right? The clients are paying you for photos that taken at their wedding, right? That are giving right. something unique and different, and this, this fits that bill. Right. There's, and all there's a lot of some, things going on here. They're, they're also well dressed, so I feel like it's pretty obvious, obvious that, like, that at least, least can be at a wedding. wedding. And one, one more time, one hundred percent, it was at a wedding. So. Yeah. Well, to me too, so. it, would the would the uh, would the clients like this photo? Because if this happened as a moment. Uh, at their there are super long in the images so, so much because, because um, it's, it's their dog. dog. Yeah, it's, it's their personal, dog. Every personal time to it them. Pop, right, right. right. And every, every time, time it pops, pops up on social media, media when, 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 I, when, I, when I want to work with that, now it's, that's, that's over because I think I want every like, like bigger competition, competition and I'm participating. Um, I want with that, but, but every time they said it was so happy that like their dog is such in the famous. <laughs> yeah, to be honest, and so it's, it's a super cool story, and it shows one more time that wedding photography competitions are not only about photographers. It just isn't because it all like it also gets a good feeling for your clients, and I mean, wedding photography, in my opinion, is. And then debatable topic. You can have a good opinion on that and a bad opinion on that or something in the middle. Which is, I'm all right with that. Mm-hmm. But in the end, it just wants this marketing tool, which is good. And second, it helps us to grow with what we're doing. And it helped me so much, like, growing with what I'm doing and learning what... I uh, want to shoot and what makes me feel good. And it's also kind of a self critique every time you're trying to send images and you're always asking like, oh, is this image good enough to get a position, get an award, get something like that. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of my, um, my thing about wedding photography. But I know, I know some people out there who are getting like super obsessed with winning wedding photography awards. I know I'm a person who is highly influenced in competitions. I swam in competition for 10 years of my life and I know they make something with you when you're winning. And that's usually a good thing. But it's it's also good to get a step back and say it's only an award, and if you're not winning, you did nothing wrong. Right. You did nothing wrong, and you're still a good photographer. Yeah. And yeah, that, that's a that's a, a problem that I, I, as the contest administrator, and I'm sure we does it fearless and, and others as well. There's so much talent and so many good photos that are submitted. And I'll, I'll often get people asking me, you know, I, I submitted these photos. I thought they were great. They didn't win anything. And I look at them and they are great photos. They're amazing. And I thought, you know, there's just so much incredible competition and every judge is going to look at it slightly differently. So that's what it was in image. That's what it was in image. Take like five or six, six times till I had the judges who like kind of appreciate say, yeah. what I was doing that, that, with, with that, that image. image. And yeah. Yeah, it's it, subje- it's subje- it feels good. Different, but it's... different judges will have different results, but uh, right. a good photo is a good photo. Yeah. Right. And also, um, just, just, just another, another thing, thing is that you are also not a bad photographer with winning awards. At least, least in my opinion. opinion. For me, For me wedding, like, like winning wedding, wedding photography competitions was like a little hack. And, and we all want hacks from time to time. Mm hmm. It's just, just a thing. Because well, for me, it, it's, a, it's a mo- another motivation factor. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. But it's just, it's, but it's, this is the only motivation factor that you're having to do something completely wrong. Right. Exactly. Your, that's your why primary I motivation is your client. Right? <laughs> that's why I take my time at weddings just to sit down and realize how happy I am to do this yeah. job. 
That's a great attitude. Okay, I see. I see a theme here. With sorry, sorry. Here, this, this, here's, this is kind of, an, kind of a, a, a bad topic, topic to discuss. To discuss it. It. Oh, <laughs> no, not, 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 not at all. I think it's. A, I think it's perfectly, really great. So I'm, I'm seeing another dog photo, the black dog lying down photo. <laughs> oh, this, this is so, so cool. That, uh, I, 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 I never realized that there's, there's so many dogs in my my photography. Right. Just uh, I like one day, another photographer came up to me and said, "Like, dude, dude like you love dogs, don't, don't you?" And I don't have any relation to dogs at all. <laughs> you don't own but a dog. Awesome. You, 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 you don't own a dog. You have a, a dog. I don't have a dog. I had a cat for seven years uh, in my life. Um, I think subconsciously you you say that you want a dog. Some someday you'll get a dog. <laughs> I don't, I don't think, think so. so. <laughs> I'm, I'm well, tell me about this I'm photo. What's what's going on here? What are you so tell me about this this photo. What's what's happening here? All right, we're in um in France right now. We're near Paris. It, it was a super amazing tour that they booked. Um, but it's, yeah, about an hour away from Paris um, near Versailles. Uh, and um, they basically they had their ceremony, ceremony at that, that place. And one, one thing I realized was, one, one, one more time, time it's a dog of, 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 the, of the wedding couple, one, one once more, more, it's just super related to them, mm -hmm. and dogs are one of the most important things in, in their life. They're now having like two or three kids, so I don't know, mm -hmm. but it's still loving that they brought up their dogs, and it was so important to have them at their wedding, wedding also at their ceremony. thing is, the dogs just don't like it or didn't like it so much to be at that ceremony at all. <laughs> because they sometimes, sometimes have their own brain, which is completely understandable if you're a dog. So basically, they had two dogs, and both of them were just like, like, like walking around the whole mm -hmm. Time like yeah, yeah but, but it was so long that at least one of them got, got super tired and just laid down. And I was just standing there, and I sometimes stand up my brain and said, "Just give me that uh, that symmetry that I want to have." Yeah. <laughs> and luckily, it just happened. It happened. Yeah. And, yeah, and that, that dog placed a, himself perfectly, right? <laughs> right. It's just that it's super, like, like symmetry, if you're just, like, put a mirror in that, mm -hmm. and that it's just, it would just, like, half the, the whole thing just mirror to the other side, which is so super, super cool. And I was, once more, I was lucky. I was lucky, but I feel like it's... One more two man um, reference, yeah, of getting lucky. If you're trying so hard with what you're doing, and just try, 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 like at one stage you will get lucky. Right. And then at that point I was lucky. Uh, but I worked hard for that. I worked really hard for that. Because I noticed them for 30 minutes before that, the whole ceremony. I just had one eye on those stalks, and they were running around, and just all of those things to create that story. Yeah. I'll go on to the next so one, but, always, but uh, uh, I always say, luck, people will look at a good photo and they'll say, oh, that was a lucky shot. Well, yes and no, lucky, but also <laughs> years and years of experience and planning and practice and thinking, it's, 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 uh, and uh, luck favors the prepared, right? Is that, I don't know if there's it's, a thing. It's, it's, it's yeah. so true. Yeah. And I, I also, also like, like one, one thing that, that I realized that getting, getting more lucky, lucky is just to shoot, shoot more images, images at, at a wedding. wedding. Right. We'll just, just get, get more, more lucky. lucky. And, and it's, it's not, not like, like just, just like uh, the kind of people who are saying it's just, just you're shooting, shooting around, around like madman. Mad and just, just some, some luck you will have anyways. I feel like, like it, it has to be neat. It's, it's more, more like, like shooting, shooting through the moments and all those, those things, things combined to the final wrestle. Yeah. Because yeah. When to, to me, it's not, not, it's not, it's not sp spray and pray is what they say. It's like shooting like yeah. crazy. It, it's... It's it's constantly being aware and being in the moment and think, capturing think, and thinking constantly, think, constantly. Think. Yeah. So here's another that great re that reflection that photo. This is the reflection of the church in the car window. Yes. There was there was another kind of thing that that, that was also pretty uh, similar to the first one. It's, it's one more time. It's about um, layering and telling the story of the day. 
and um, which is super, super, like, like still one thing, thing that, that is super important, important for me because, because I combined, combined the, the people and the hands, which, which are help me as well with that image, with, with this image here. here. Um, but, but also shows the, the church they were um, married at, at that time. And so, so it's, it's kind of a, a combination of different layers that, that, that just tells that, that, that the story that, that, that I, I want, want to show to the people. people. Yeah, it's and a layer of time. Like here you are coming out of the car and that's where you're going to be going. Here's your future. Right, yeah. right, nice. right. Um, what's, what's your yeah. thoughts on, uh, on black and white versus color? Um, honestly, I shoot way oh, no, no, I never, I never shoot black, black and white, white but, but I uh, post process post, post process way less black, black and white than uh, people, people are expecting. expecting. Um, I feel, I feel like, like there are just some images that need black and white, mm -hmm. and there are also some images that it can, can definitely give you uh, like or get, get image to an um, image to higher level. level. And so I'm looking at this next image, of... which is in color. So I'm trying to imagine this color image if it was black and white, right? The, this is a hilarious photo, by the but way. But the next one is <laughs> pretty different because the tones are pretty, pretty fitting. fitting. Mm -hmm. And that's why I like, um, I like, I like the, the color one. one. There was, was actually one that I shot with, with, with Isabella Hatting. Hatting. You mm -hmm. probably all know, know her. Sure. From which, what was, um, she's doing. doing. Um, yeah. yeah. But, but it, it was, was also, also not a lucky, lucky one. one. I, I had that, that idea, idea, but I had, I had it for like five seconds, seconds and just, just got, got down on not only one knees, knees but, but laid uh, on, on the ground in the sand and just, just shot. And, and then, then so, just, so the bride, the, you didn't tell the bride to walk ahead. She was our, no. already walking down to the beach. I never, never knew that. that. I never knew that. that. I was pretty lucky with the hands, and I know that that. Because, because she, she just, just never flew around all day, mm -hmm. just one time thing, which, which was one more time pretty lucky, lucky but sometimes yeah. you get the odds in your favor. Yep. And that's the image that, I, um, that, 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 that pretty much sums everything up. up. And then just, just for me, that's, I'm always looking for that 100% image. And it's kind of close. It's kind of close. I always I always said if I had the 100% image that that was good wedding party. But this, this one was pretty, pretty close, close because, because I, I, I know that, that, that it will never ever like can do that again. Nope. At, at least if, if it's not a post or stage. Or exactly. To, to discover it, it and to create happened. it is once in a lifetime. Yeah. It just yeah. happens. Another one of those great images that make you look like it. What am I looking at? Oh. <laughs> oh. It's, it's so <laughs> it's so great. funny because, because like uh. It, Thankfully, Thankfully, also um, to, to ISWP, it was, was featured at uh, a lot of sites and a lot of uh, yeah. related, to, like, was this a Daily Mail or something like that? Yeah. I got some pretty harsh comments from some people who, was, who didn't notice that it was the dark and that image was not addressed. It. They all said some pretty mean things. I don't want to repeat yeah. that right don't, now. Don't, but don't it was something to the really hard against, against uh, the, 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 the man and woman thing perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Ne some never, pretty... never read the comments. That's my rule. Never read comments. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was funny. It was funny because, because people, people obviously, obviously was, was too dumb, dumb to just see it and right, just right. do right. reading right. comments yeah. otherwise. Well, I do love the uh, I do love the colors in that. I think the the colors in that make it uh, make it better. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's one, one of the one, one of the times, times where uh, I definitely prefer color. And and also, um, I like that the, the dog, dog had kind of the same, same color tone, tone than, uh, like, like, like the dress of the dog. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think I'm pretty, pretty lucky about. about. So um, it, it, it didn't work out. out and, and black and white. That's why that's where I stayed with color. Yeah, the next yeah. next one is a very strong black and white. It's a very strong silhouette. Um, well, there was, was interestingly it was the same um like, like the, the one we had two minutes, minutes ago with the uh, with, with the, the prize and then out of the uh, or climbing out, out of the, of the car, mm -hmm. and, and it was the same prize, but, but on a completely, completely other point of 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 the day and. The funny thing, thing about this image, image that um, we were all doing mistakes, and this, this image pretty much was a mistake for me, because I don't know how it happened or why it happened, 
But we were all super happy that we were all having two card slots and we were all using them all the time. Things turned out that um, I only had one card in my JPEG slot. So, <laughs> for about three or four hours of that wedding, um, was, I only shot a JPEG. And there was one of the JPEGs that actually uh, turned out okay. pretty good. I mean, all the images turned out pretty good. And the bride and bride couple was super happy with the images. They didn't notice anything. It's, it's pretty interesting how uh, good JPEGs are. Uh, in the modern world. That's what I realized, but I have done that and never doing it again, hopefully. Yeah, it all, it all worked out. Really? <laughs> so, yeah, so, it, is this, or, so how was this shot then? Is it a reflection? Is it, it's uh, not, not a double exposure. It's, uh, it's a reflection, reflection of the car. car. I, she, she was, was like, like, I had once more, luck is the word of the day, I know that. But I was pretty lucky that I had um, backlight for the dress, who kind of like uh, okay. gets way, um, like it just looks stunning. And the um, the first layer that you have on the image is just the um, the, the location that uh, she was. Uh, we were just coming from a portrait session, mm -hmm. one of the, the rare things that happens. Um, <laughs> But, but we're just coming there and we're just shooting through the car. And I feel like I like that it just kind of over, overlays and gives one more kind of matter of perspective. Um, it kind of shows that we're in a, a kind of woody place uh, with mm -hmm. um, a foresty place. And that's what I like about this image. Yeah, I do too. I love the feeling of it. It's another example too of what you talk about shooting a lot because sometimes yeah. you shoot the portrait session, you're headed back to the car and you're thinking, yes. okay, I got to get my car. We're going to go back to the church yes. or wherever. But if you're constantly in the moment and constantly looking for images and faces and because, movement and I mean, light, I mean, create, you'll see that's, that's so true. That's so true. You got to be, be there. You got to be present. Amazing right? images can turn up at anywhere, at any time. Just have to be right in that place and just shoot, because otherwise you, you don't want to to miss all of that. Mm -hmm. Because we we all have our opportunities to the wedding, and we all have. And another thing, a lot of people would tell me you can't get award images in Germany because we're always like super boring people, and nothing happens at weddings at all. It's total bullshit. Yeah. We're all getting lucky from time to time, and we just have to be there to be lucky and be ready for the luck that yeah. the environment and the, the people and things around us are giving us. Yeah, and like I said, you know, luck favors the prepared, and sometimes those get you, your most unique and unusual photos because they weren't planned or thought of. Now, here's so, a lovely, this is a lovely moment um, of the... <laughs> That's not one with the bell. Emotional. Not a it, bell. Well, you can see what's so special about this is the is the tear. Obviously, is the yeah. high is the high point. The tear running onto her arm. It's just amazing. It was just one more time. <laughs> Isabel said, "Just keep down." He like just chill for a minute. And I said, "Nope, um, I'm going for that." I think it was faster than her. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, it was just a quick moment. And I know that um, that the pride is emotional. I know that that the pride was was emotional the whole day, which is uh, something that uh, was kind of in my favor once more. But it's also about like analyzing how people are. It's it's when talk is a lot uh, about uh, psychological psychological things. There you go. Sorry. <laughs> yep, yep. And it's a lot it. about <laughs> analyzing people and like how they take. You learn so mm -hmm. much just from watching and just being around with them. And you, you're always like analyzing people, not only like the pride and groom, but who's the crazy dude who's doing super weird stuff at the weddings. Who is one of the, like, more of a shy kind who maybe it's just starts crying every time something emotional happens? And all those things are getting back to your photography. 
it is super romantic, romantic if you were to say it like that, that but it, it just helps with what you do. No, it really does. And I, I know that a lot of stuff is super unromantic that I'm saying right now, but it's, it's, it's okay. okay. It's just the way how I see weddings. And I'm okay with... That's the thing that you said in the start. When, 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 when you're five or ten years old, like, uh, a lot of your friends are having weddings. It's not a thing that I'm super looking, like, looking forward to, honestly. It's just... I see this as a job. Yeah. And I see this as a job that I love so much. Yeah. And my always my main goal is to just get the best travel possible. And I like shooting, I like photography, I like wedding photography for its diversity, for all those yeah, those crazy things happening and for emotions and all those super cool things going on. But I don't yeah. like weddings for itself. Okay. It's not that I hate them. Yeah. It's just I don't like I don't have an emotional connection to weddings. I go there, have a ton of fun, try to deliver, and go with that. Well, for a photographer, you know, whatever your feelings are about weddings specifically, for a photographer, weddings are an amazing opportunity for um, for shooting because there's you have such a wide variety of situations and people and Definitely. lighting and locations. So it's like if you want to practice the skill of photography, yeah. weddings gives you lots of opportunities. <laughs> you can you can basically do everything at weddings. Yeah. But you also can do everything at weddings, which uh, which is another thing that I realized pretty late. Mm -hmm. That I mean in the end it comes down to the that you have to ask yourself what are the the images that you really need to deliver. Mm -hmm. And it's not so much that everyone everyone's thinking about. Because I know photographers coming up with their shot lists and they're doing this shot and this shot of the flowers or any mm -hmm. table shot. And it's not that I don't do that. I do that, I do that if I, I have the time to, if mm -hmm. I'm in the mood. Well, with enough experience, you know in your mind the, the important shots that you have to get. But other than that, you're on your own. Like this next shot of the boy hanging uh, on the uh, antlers, uh, this, was, this was not on a shot list. The bride didn't definitely. say, I want you to take definitely. a picture of a little boy hanging on the antlers of this. Definitely. <laughs> because it's all those like limitations that you're giving to yourself it just puts you one more time down. Mm -hmm. The time you're looking at your shot list or just thinking about a shot list, it's the time where you, where you can create something super cool and super unique. Mm -hmm. And this I, is a unique, I, unusual shot, right? Right. And this is and another I, real moment. I know. I, this, this was another one. I, I spent like 10 minutes with that. I could have used that time mm. to, I, I don't know, just doing table shots of pretty flowers and backlight. I don't know. But it would also stick with that boy and create something, something cool, something unique, and something. I mean, for that boy, in ten or twenty years, when he's seeing that one again, I'm pretty sure that he will have a big smile on his face. Mm -hmm. Pretty, pretty sure. Because, oh, but also for for his parents, because one thing I realized with that day, not an analytical thing. That he was climbing on things the whole day. <laughs> so I knew something will happen like someday, or mm -hmm. at least at some point of the wedding. So it just stick for a, a little it's, time. It's another good point that you brought up that you spent a few minutes with this scene because you saw something happening. And I think uh, a lot of, um, I guess, clients, I would suppose, or non photographers don't always realize that sometimes you really have to work a particular scene or be patient with a particular setup and wait for that moment. Sometimes you have to take 20, 30, 40, 50 shots and you get yes. edited down to the one, that one shot that makes um, it. And I mean, in, in the end, you, you have so much time at weddings. And it's just true. It's just, if you're, if you're shooting like those whole day covers like I do, and primarily shoot them, and just maybe only do them, just add a few, uh, uh, where I shoot like 12 hours, but usually I'm just saying like I'm staying from the morning to till, till at least 12 o'clock and afterwards it's mm -hmm. up to the mood of the, of the day and up to the mood of the people if I feel like it's necessary to stick with them. Sometimes I, and it's also, I, I love to, to show um, those 
crazy wild things going on at weddings. But I also have weddings where just the mood staff to me, they won't happen too much besides people just drinking their beer. Yeah. On other weddings, I stay at the floor, which is completely cool as well. But that's something that, that is my decision and that, that's what, what I um, do from, just completely for my own. And most, most of the time, time I get, get super rewarded for that. Sure. Um, this, this next image with the with the father being emotional. Tell us, <laughs> tell us about this one. This is great. That there was there was not a award winner at this collection at ISWP. Um, so <laughs> I was in Virginia, USA for that wedding. So people, those people were super awesome and super crazy to just basically fly me around the whole club to just stick with them for three days and having me with them and they were pretty much the most awesome people so you don't you don't have to have your favorite guys and you shouldn't have your favorite guys I'm completely wrong but i just love being with them it just was a super awesome experience because they let me be with them so super close on an emotional base mm -hmm. That's, and more, that's just, more fun and more rewarding for you too. To definitely, and it wasn't really like assert yourself. Um, really, and it just wasn't the um, the, um, the the couple itself, but also the family. And that dad, he basically just every time we were doing something for the three or four days we were up in with them, he was just driving around me all the time and just giving me a kind of a bigger sense of what uh, the U.S. is about and what people are, like the problems they are facing right now and all those, from that, from, from this, this is sad, I got so much information about America and what makes wow. this place unique. And for me, it's super rewarding to yeah, got a real give connection with something them. back because yeah. he, one way or another, is special to me. And we we were Facebook friends now, and just <laughs> it's just cool. That's it's so just cool. a cool a cool story. And so this so this photo then has like a personal meaning even to you because you formed this friendship with the with the dad there. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And it's also another thing. Those images that I'm showing on my website and my portfolio and like for other people, they are also my stories. Mm -hmm. They're basically telling my Saturdays that I'm having during my youth, during yeah, during me growing up. And every time I'm looking at those images, I'm kind of get like. It's just a flashback of these pretty cool days. And sometimes I'm, yeah. I'm just going to my website, looking at all the weddings, yeah, and so true. Feel, feel the mood of the day again. Yeah. Yeah. And it's even like if you, I have your own, that, you have your own personal photos of your family and yourself growing up. But right. When, if you, when you look back over a 10, 20, 30 year career of wedding photography, that's your history as well, not just your clients, right? Right. <laughs> and, I, I, I say it's. it's and yeah. a summary of my weekends. And that's, that's, that's right. So cool. That's right. This so is my life. Cool. We got one more, one more photo to look at, and then we'll wrap up here. So this is this. We see a. You know what I'm seeing a theme of? I see a theme of moments. I'm seeing a theme of dogs and kids and humor. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and emotion. And a part. lot of a lot of emotion in there as well. This is great. Yeah, it, it kind of kind of sums everything up. It was kind of my. Pretty much my, my first international award, which I'm still super happy about because I'm pretty much the, the only person that knows the backstory behind that, as I mean, now I'm not anymore. But on that day, I was so super sick. Mm. And I was close to throwing up at like every two seconds. And you know, you see those images and you realize, oh, it's pretty late during that day. It's at least like, um, I don't know, like 9 or 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And I've been with them since 8 or 9 in the morning. Right, right. And it's another story of not giving up. I could have, I could have told me, okay, I'm super sick. Just do everything. Just do the necessary. And... Just do, um, yeah, just do that the clients are happy. 
I mean, they're super happy with this image as well because the 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 boy is pretty close to them as well. But um, on the other hand, it shows me to just don't give up, even if you're sometimes have problems with your health. Sometimes have. I had two two weeks ago. Yeah, two years ago, I had a pretty rough season because I had pro back problems all the way, mm-hmm. and I had, I used painkillers at nearly every wedding. But it was so important to me to just don't let that like limit myself with the work I'm doing and still giving like everything I have um, and all all the things that just it's, it's important to me. Sometimes there are bad days, days that you have to overcome them, and it's yeah. because yeah. sometimes what you're showing is is that the. Uh, what separates the really great photographers from a good photographer is that willingness to, to do that extra effort. So yes. anyone can take a picture of a cake cutting. It happens yes. almost every, every single wedding. You cut the yes. cake, they feed each other, you know, it's a toast, it's whatever. So awesome. But to look for, so to look for those other just, moments is another yeah. is an additional effort, additional willingness to say, I'm going to push myself and see what else I can get. Not everybody yeah. does that. That's what's unique. That's true. Yeah. That's true. It's a great example. Yeah. Because <laughs> you it's such a great face, too. <laughs> All right. That's pretty much the last image. <laughs> well, that's great to see you. Well, thank you so much. Thanks uh, for having me, really. Oh, it was really my pleasure. So I mean, to, to get to talk to you. Uh, and interestingly, it's it's one of my bad days as well because I threw up like three hours ago. I was no. at my lowest, lowest, and I was constantly thinking like, oh, should I contact Joe? Should I? Or if I shouldn't. And I said like, come I on. I never have known. You, you, look right perfect, you look great. So whatever <laughs> like, you did. I'm, I'm, a bit, I'm a bit more wide. Like people who um, saw me after I came back right. from Vegas, I was I was pretty dark in my skin and I was super wide, but, it, <laughs> but it's all fine. I just had something that wasn't pretty good anymore um, oh, yesterday. Glad, glad you recovered. So, uh, it's all okay. so if people want to find you or contact you, obviously your website. What's what other places That's can they find you? What are you saying? What where, where else can they find you? Like on uh, social media, somewhere, Facebook, or? Facebook, Instagram. Just keep contacting me. I I'm always happy to talk to people, and I'm. I mean, I'm pretty much the most introvert person. If you talk to me in person, I'm pretty much getting over that by. Um, yeah, when people started to ask me to speak at conference and all those things, mm-hmm. which helped me a lot with that. But I'm still, I'm a super shy person, but I'm pretty good at Facebook and Instagram and all those things. So if you have any question at all, just ask me. And I'm, I try to be the kindest person to, that I possibly can. And just, I, I know that people trusted me in some ways when I was pretty young. And there was also other photographers who, who put so much um, trust in me by saying, hey, man, I think you're talented, and I mm-hmm. think you're onto something. Please stay with that. Yeah. And I know it's – I always have that feeling that it's okay to – or it's, it's pretty awesome for me to give back to other people who are maybe in, a, in an earlier stage of their career who yeah. maybe didn't have so much experiences uh, with – than I have. I mean, I have shot like 120, 130 weddings now, which is pretty crazy, and it's just awesome that I'm, that I'm still and I'm still in the game and just still doing it. I'm still passionate about. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm sure um, you're a big you inspiration to uh, all their, any 16 or 17 year olds that are out there that are wondering if, if they can do it. Here's an example would, of how you can do it. I, yeah. I would definitely love to. To also to connect with other young photographers because yeah. I know the struggles. I know that it's super hard to get clients to, or in general, people trusting you because this is not also this is not always about clients. It's also about your family having kind of the not trusting issues. Your friends, mm-hmm. your all the people around you felt that I was just super crazy and super just. Yeah, it, it, it was crazy. When yeah, I first well, said, I want to be a wedding photographer when I was just 16 or 70 years. That's amazing. And I kind of understand that it is crazy. But, but on the other hand, you just never like get down from that and just 
because all those things that is what is putting you back just in the things you're wanting to do and it's yeah and it's also good to have people who are saying like you can do it and who are saying like you you can do a career in wedding photography even if it's your first career because that's another thing that I realized with wedding photography because I see so many so many photographers who did something completely different before that and now coming slowly in their 30s into wedding photography and realizing that is such an amazing job. Yeah. But also other people. And there are such few that yeah, it's 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 cool to see kind of the other side. Well, you're an inspiration to uh, all of us old folks too that are still <laughs> Try, try to stay in the game and, and uh, your work speaks for itself so no worries right. about, about your age at all so thank, uh, you. thank you so much Stephen great talking to you and, it was uh, really awesome talking to you we'll put all your that's contact cool. information in the uh, in the YouTube description too so people can find you that's awesome okay so much. <laughs> take care good talking to you, right. see, see you later bye